I think you're leading into this next one here with, with that comment. Yeah, no, I, so we can continue our discussion on uh, replenishment. So you see the level decreasing, and we talked about a little bit uh, the batch size. You know, here you got this example of the two-bin system, you know, a simple two-bin Kanban. With the clear container, you can see the, the level decreasing. And again, you're going to try to consider those uh, three things that Jeff talked about, the, the consumption rate at which you uh, are consuming the milk, uh, the delivery, how frequently you're going to get uh, uh, replenishment, and then the quality, uh, how reliable uh, the, the vendor is. Well, yeah, and, and you know, so the way the common system works, in this case it's very informal, but I think a lot of people intuitively do this. When the, the one milk is empty, they pull it out and they add it to their grocery list. And any time they go to the grocery store in the next few days, you know, the time between when the one bottle empties and you make it to the grocery store to replace it is, is that lead time we're talking about. And, you know, you make sure that your demand during that lead time is, is low enough. Now, I, I've never gone to the store and had the milk out. You know, I've never actually run on the milk. So I, I kind of consider milk to be 100% reliable. And I may not have the exact brand I want, but I can always get milk. So in this case, you're really talking about, do you go to the store frequently enough for the size of the containers? And in this case, the family drinking can get there within a gallon of milk usage. So that empty becomes a signal. But on the shop floor, you're going to have other types of signals, not just, you know, you may have the empty container if you're refilling it. But, but what are the other signals you would use in your facility, Tim? Yeah, we use a variety of uh, signals, and I think what's a what's a really nice one that to be able to use is the shape of the actual object. So, you know, in some of our uh, cable productions, uh, we have very large Gaylord type uh, containers. So, the actual open spot on the floor where the Gaylord uh, was will have a taped out region, and that will be the signal to replace that uh, item. We'll use a simple two bin system just like this, two Gaylords in order, and as they take the first one. It creates an opening there on the floor, and that signals to reorder the next one. So, anytime you can use the shape of the object to uh, kind of paint out or um, use that as a signal to replace it, is a real effective means. And, and the other part on, on it is, you know, this home combine system is pretty informal. You know, when you pull that milk jug out, if you don't know the system, you're going to throw it away, and maybe that makes the person doing the shopping miss out on something. You know, if you don't follow the the process specifically. That's a, that's a key thing on, on having a Kanban system in place is that there has to be a very formal way of, of managing it, and there also has to be a lot of training and education that goes into it. So if somebody sees, you know, another, another method is using Kanban cards where you pull the card off of an empty bin and, you know, you drop it into a Kanban post where the materials people then order off of that card, and it's a very precise flow on how the cards are handled. But there's a lot of rules people have. And uh, Tim, do you use common cards in your organization? Yeah, we, we extensively use the Kanban cards because we combine that with the milk runs. And so uh, as we create uh, empties or we need to replace the quantity, uh, we're delivering parts to the floor and uh, back to the um, shipping receiving area to deliver to a customer. Mm -hmm. They'll pick up these Kanban cards, and uh, that will have a signal on uh, what item to replace, where it goes, but also when we expect to, it to show up back in the manufacturing area. Some items, because of the size, may move more uh, frequently than others, uh, and so it's important to have that two-way communication. So in, in some cases, it might be eight hours we need the delivery, or in 24 hours is okay. Uh, it's important to have that communication because then the other team is able to uh, best utilize their time. They don't have to rush on an item that's 24 hours, but maybe on something that's eight hours, they need to get working on uh, replenishing that quantity. Mm -hmm. you know, as we've been talking, Tim says Kanban, and I say Kanban. And we, we were laughing about that when we were going through this. And there's so many you know words that make their way into, into lean and continuous improvement. The important thing is really to understand the meaning behind it. And I think a lot of people get hung up on the pronunciation. I think it's, you know, I, I try not to get too worked up about things like that. I don't even know who's right. I don't know if Tim is right or I'm right or if there's different ways of pronouncing it. But, you know, the point is, is people can understand what we're talking about. And you know, get things like Jidoka or Jidoka or Kaizen or Kaizen. And, and just because you're bringing in a lot of um, different vernacular into lean, it, it can be confusing to people. So I always try to just back away from any time, you know, you're talking about um, what's right and what's wrong, I look for consistency within the organization. So if Tim's whole organization says Kanban, I'm happy with that. So, you know, I never try to go and 
change the way an organization's uh, be doing things if it's effective. Um, I don't know. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that, Tim? No, I agree. I think uh, far too often we're hung up on the language. Well, I think it's important to uh, understand the uh, original intent. Uh, I'm not sure that it's really important to understand how to pronounce uh, the terminology. Um, I, I'm more in learning by doing anyway, and so I think that's a practical approach. Yeah, and I've, I've kind of, the general way I've done it is if the word is shorter, so saying Kanban or Kanban is much shorter than saying signal cards or signaling system or, you know, when, when you say can, uh, Kanban, it's a much quicker way to relay the information. So it's almost like continuous improvement for the vocabulary. Um, you know, you, people start to try to put in a whole bunch of other words, you know, and then try to incorporate those into, you know, the, the lean, you know, strategy deployment is, is another one. And I'm not going to try and pronounce the, uh, the Japanese word for it. But, you know, you, you, you know it's, sometimes there's this, this push to try to put more um, other words into it to make it sound more complicated or to make it become more, um, in some ways it's almost like elitist if you, if you start using a lot of these very, very unique terms. The, the point is to get the point, you know, the point is to get the message across quickly easily and, and very well understood and received. So, you know, keep that in mind as you're, as you're looking at the terminology or vocabulary. So, Jeff, is a uh, milk process a push or a pull uh, system? Well, you know, that's, um, this is on my front porch right now. And in, in, in the old days, you know, you used to have milk deliveries almost universally. You know, I'm talking the, the really old days. And the way, you know, the way that system worked was you would take your empties out and put them on the porch, and the milk guy would come by, and he would either, you know, I don't know if they filled them up or if they just swapped them out. I think they probably swapped them out. But you get a fresh, uh, you know, a fresh glass container of milk because the milk container itself was a signal for how many you needed. And if you had a couple extra, you know, if you needed extra milk that week, you'd put a couple extra empties out. And then if you used them up, you'd start having a couple extra empties stored in your house until you needed more. So that was a signal for how to get more milk. You know, you're on, you're on a very set schedule, but the amount of milk you have changes, and it's a little different from a, from a typical common system where it's the quantities and the you know are consistent, and the frequency would change if you get a little ahead or a little behind. So in the, in the old days, it was very clearly a pull system. You only got the milk that you needed when you put it out. And, and Tim was saying that he actually does this right now in his life. You know, I use this other system. We'll get to that in a minute. In fact, it's funny right now. The the milk truck, the, the Smith Brothers milk truck, just pulled up outside. I'm, I'm broadcasting from my my home office right now. And so you'll, you'll probably hear the milk truck in a minute is delivering this. It's just, you know, kind of funny. But the, uh, how, how do you, what do you get delivered, Tim? Yeah, we do uh, delivery to uh, the grocery store. You know, we take a trip to the grocery store and replace basically what we consume. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a pretty well on uh, understanding of how much uh, milk we consume. It's pretty much purchasing the same quantity every time. But, uh Unless for some reason we're out of the house uh, more often uh, or not, uh, then we'll adjust the quantity. But it's kind of similar to other types of deliveries you might get at your house. Yeah, that, that's you know, what I was going for. It was, uh, not very clear, but that's what I'm talking about. What do you get delivered to your house? Yeah, I mean, we, we'll do uh, the Poland spring water and things like that, and so you'll see uh, water delivery. And that's pretty much a push uh, schedule, but allows the customer to be able to modify the delivery based on their consumption as well. So quick uh, check on the internet and you can modify your delivery routes uh, for that so and, and there's some convenience in there yeah and, and the comment system you just drop a white card you know a lot of times they call it the white card and it's just a card for a special order you know if you're expecting a spike in demand you get a good you know good sale you would send a different card to, to a one-time use card that you would get extra inventory brought in and that you, you would just deplete that and then you go back to your normal system now, this that box here, because of the changes in the way milk is packaged, my, uh, my milk comes in cartons now. And you finish up the carton and you throw the carton away. So there's no indicator for the, for the milkman when he comes on how many uh, cartons of milk to leave. So he operates off of a standing schedule and a standing order. So I have to actually go, and if I need less, I have to go and you know, create an exception to the process rather than the process managing itself. So if I forget to put a little note out there that says only leave three this week instead of four, um, I would end up with extra milk. And if I have leftover from the previous week, if I was on vacation or you know, if whatever happened, 
you know, you, you can end up having a, a push system will cause your uh, inventory levels to start getting out of control very quickly because it's not linked to the customer.